I don't know if I'm putting this in the beginning or the end of the video, but yes, I did want to give a quick shout out to my brother-in-law, Roy, for getting me a pretty nice gift card to pretty much spend wherever. And then at the time when I bought this item, pretty much at the next day after Christmas, it was a pretty nice deal on something that's usually 80 or sometimes over a hundred bucks, depending where you get it from. But it was definitely a color I don't have and from a sports team that I only have one jersey from, but yeah, I had to jump on this. It's one of their, the Duke, it's called like a Brotherhood or something like that version of it. And it's just like a pretty dark navy blue. And then it's just a number one. But yeah, this was like, I want to say 80 plus something bucks, but it was down to like 50, 55 total, something like that. So yeah, it definitely worked out for myself and my fandom. So yes, thank you once again to Roy and yeah definitely very happy to have this it took a little bit but i was not worried just because i knew it was the holidays and pretty much everyone else after they got you know gift cards too were spending it so i wasn't worried about it but yeah definitely came pretty quickly only like a week and a half and yeah definitely one of the mainstays i think ever since i ordered it they maybe have been undefeated since so it might be some good luck for my duke blue devils this season so Yes, thanks again. What's going on, dudes and dudettes? So, yeah, there's been a lot of talk, especially since it's the beginning of 2024 and about the supposed to be coming new NCAA 24 college football video game from EA Sports, which should officially be happening this summer. I know it was supposed to be, it was projected last summer in 2023, fell through. I said no matter what officially in 2024 and it looks like everything's a go ahead and looks like it's going to make its target date which is awesome because everybody's been waiting for that game to get redone again and updated it's been since basically the end of 2013 or sometime around there so yeah it's definitely very exciting that'll be pretty cool if Caleb Williams will be on the cover, I doubt it just because since when it's going to come out, it should be the start of the new season. So you don't know if they're going to pick somebody who's maybe going to be a star coming up in 2024 or the ex Heisen winner this last season, Jaden Daniels from LSU. You know, he might be, Caleb might be two years removed from that by then. So maybe they don't go with him. It would suck. But yeah, I think it would be pretty cool if he was on there. But either way, so most likely purchasing it at some point this summer. So definitely looking forward to that. And then yes, as I think I briefly mentioned that Will Howard, the quarterback from Kansas State who had visited USC and everybody kind of projected and you know predicted that he was gonna be a USC Trojan. He basically did pick Ohio State the other day officially instead of USC, which wasn't surprising because they have their own troubles at that position and they seem a bit more desperate than USC was after their bowl game, so it wasn't that much of a crazy thing either, especially since everybody kind of calls Miller Moss time now Miller time, kind of like the beer, which is pretty funny. But yeah, he pretty much, like Lincoln Riley said, did scare away any transfer quarterback away just because I think it says a lot more about Will Howard than how good actually Miller Moss is because if he doesn't even want to compete and try to do that at least even during the spring because he could still technically transfer at some point in the summer after the spring semester but he didn't even want to do that <laughs> he was too afraid to of a little bit of competition and if that's the case then I will stand behind Miller Moss anyways as the USC quarterback and speaking of maybe finding a potential to be a backup to Miller Moss is a guy from UNLV, the quarterback out there, who set a bunch of records and did very well as a freshman for UNLV Rebels this last season, Jaden Mayava. I want to say he's somewhat local. I don't forget if it was Hawaii, California, or maybe Arizona. I could be wrong, but still pretty much close to southern part of the U.S., hopefully. But yeah, he's a pretty big dude, like 6'4", already over 200 plus pounds, and yeah, he definitely did really good for a very crappy team out there in UNLV. And even though his team did not win a lot of games, he still had a lot of stats. So he was trying to do as much as he could. And, 
you know, to have him there to be like a placeholder for at least be a backup to Miller Moss this year, then maybe be a starter next year while Julian Lewis reclassifies to the 2025 class a year early. He gets into campus, gets to chill out and be a backup. And then, you know, a year from there after Maiava could either stay or maybe transfer as well or go to the NFL if he does prove that well in that year. And then Julian Lewis becomes a starter eventually in 2026 is kind of what I'm projecting here for the quarterback room. You just never know because of the transfer portal and how pissy and mad these guys get. But hopefully this is how it turns out and definitely looking forward to USC's future at the quarterback position and 247 sports recently put out a i think a, they got a betting sites predictions for next year that according to them the winner of the national championship and usc was the 14th best odds to win the championship at some weird number i don't really understand betting numbers and all that but they were the 14th team in line and i don't know it might be kismet and meant to be because that is my number and I know a few years ago, USC was ranked number 14, and they did pretty good, but not great. They did not win the championship that year when the AP poll came out. But if I see a little bit more 14s, and I might be feeling this might be a pretty special year for Miller Moss and the USC Trojans. So definitely looking forward to that. And then there was some news. I think Scott Schrader, Schrader recently reported that there's a good chance that the offensive lineman for USC, Jonah Monheim, will be returning back to the school instead of going to the NFL. I know there's a possibility he could get selected in the middle rounds, be like a third to fifth, maybe a sixth round pick. But if he does return to play very well, especially in the position he needs to play in, then I think he could boost himself up to a second, third round pick, in my opinion. So if this does become official, I will update you on it. But yes, if it does, then this will be a definitely big time get to have a veteran on that offensive line, which we'll be starting a bunch of young guys and maybe some, you know, other transfers, you never know. But yeah, definitely looking forward to seeing what he officially decides. And the USC women's basketball team the other day did beat Oregon State 56 to 54. Raya Marshall is now the number three all-time blocks leader at USC, which is pretty cool. Then this the other day, or maybe even today, they beat Oregon 68 to 54. Everybody played very well. It's kind of kind of surprising that Juju Watkins isn't the player of the game anymore, but I'm guessing she isn't having to do that much. And that, uh, watching those highlights of that Oregon State game, it just seemed like both teams were either struggling to shoot or the, the teams were both playing good defense because obviously watching the highlights, they only show the makes. But that was a pretty low-scoring game for the women this year, and they were still able to to get the victory luckily so definitely very happy for them and I think they're like 12 and 1 on the season which is pretty cool they should still be ranked in the top 10 in my opinion but yeah definitely looking forward to the rest of the season for them and then the running back Austin Jones who did say he was going to the NFL last week he was accepted or did accept an invitation to the Hula Bowl which I mentioned some other USC and Duke players were going to last week and so he's going to be going out there too to Hawaii. So that's pretty cool for him. So definitely looking forward to that game. Could be the first one that I've seen. So that'd be pretty cool. And the USC men's basketball team did have a big win. I think it was Saturday against Stanford. 93-79. to Kobe Johnson went off with 21 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists, 5 steals, and 2 blocks. Which is pretty nice. He definitely led the team and I think Stanford had just upset I want to say Arizona or one other school so they were kind of running a bit of a on a high streak of themselves feeling good about themselves even though their real the record wasn't that good but USC did take care of business at home which was nice so definitely very happy about that then an ex-USC basketball player Benny Boatwright went off overseas I forget I don't know exactly where he was playing but he definitely went off. He had 51 points, 12 rebounds, and that's pretty crazy. I think he shot the ball like 30-something times, so it's kind of like a, a Kobe stat where Kobe would shoot the ball like 20-plus times and maybe get barely over 30, so you kind of want to average a little less shots but more points and all that stuff, but as long as you get the victory, 
that's all that's good. So congratulations to Benny Boatwright, and you never know, he might get picked up on an NBA roster. So looking forward to that. And the Anaheim Ducks' Frank Vitrano or Vitrano was named a 2024 NHL All-Star last week, so that's pretty cool. Hopefully they'll get a couple more guys in there, you know, competing in some of those other games and stuff, so that'll be pretty good for the young guys. And then I believe his name is Lucas Dostal. I know it's the last I know the last name Dostal for the Anaheim Ducks goalie. He did make a record saving like 55 saves, but sadly it did come in a loss in overtime, I believe, to whatever team it was the other day, but that did set an Anaheim Ducks franchise record, so that's pretty good for him, so congrats to him. And to finish this video off with some miscellaneous news, yes, the Golden Globes were tonight, and obviously one of the shows that I've been talking about quite a bit, The Bear was nominated for five different categories, I believe, I think it was like Best TV Series, and like Comedy or Musical, Best Actress and Actor in Comedy, Best Supporting Actor, Actress in a TV Series. That was some pretty good nominations overall. Definitely well-deserved because that second season was pretty good. Not as good as the first, in my opinion, but yes, yeah, still very good and definitely looking forward to that next season coming up. And I don't think I've heard anything official about it, but hoping to hear something soon especially with all the recognition they got tonight on a pretty big night for tv so congrats to them and then they actually did win three of those five categories i think it should have been four they did not win for supporting actor because i forget his name it's like ebon it's like a weird hard name i want to say he's european but he plays the cousin of the main character uh that they call the bear and yeah his maturation from when he started to even now he's like the more entertaining part of the show in my opinion and especially what he had to do in the second season I thought deserved not only the nomination but definitely the win I don't know exactly who he was up against I didn't, I didn't really watch the show I probably caught the end of it like the last two awards given out and I only saw like the winners on X so yeah but on X I did see that the main character or the actor, Jeremy Allen White for the best actor in a comedy musical series. I don't know why they call it Jeremy Allen White. He won for best actor. It's weird how they put him in different categories, even though it's like, it's kind of funny because you're laughing at the chaos, but it's a bit more of like a serious, more drama category in my opinion. But that's the Golden Globes. They just do that so they could get 10 nominations for a best actor because you have the drama in one category and then the comedy guys in the other but he did win that so that's pretty good for him congrats and then the woman on the show is the main character Sydney she won as well best actress and I believe her name is Ayo Itabiri Itabiri so that's pretty cool for him that's the, pretty much the first thing I've seen both of them in I know Alan White was in Shameless, which is a pretty popular show with William H. Macy before, but that was always on Showtime, so never watched it, but I think he was just recently in this wrestling movie with Zac Efron called The Iron Claw, so yeah, he's definitely been stepping it up a bit. I know some chicks are going crazy off his Calvin Klein debut the other day, but yeah, this woman, she, Io, she was in, she's been in a lot of stuff, but I'd never seen any of those things, but She's a pretty good actress as well. Definitely one of the two main characters. Actually, both of these two are the main characters, even though they did divert into a lot of different storylines of the other characters in the second season. But they did both stand out in this season as well, in my opinion. I think what really helped them win, especially this last category, because I did mention they had three wins, was the best series overall, or best, you know, comedy slash musical or whatever they called it they did end up winning that one which is pretty cool because i mean especially i forget it's the second to last or one of those last seasons there's an episode called the it's a christmas episode but yeah it's one of the more hectic insane episodes once you realize of how crazy some of these characters are it's because of that so that's definitely a good one in the second season but then there's also one that is literally like I think there's 17 minutes before there's a cut in the entire show, which it sucks because it's on streaming. Because if you were to watch it like 
in a movie or a play, it w there would be no cuts, and they did it perfectly. I don't know how they did it. Obviously, these are really good trained actors, and they probably could be on Broadway and doing plays like that, but for <clears throat> that many characters, and especially a small, confined place, and pretty much in only one business, to do a 17-plus minute shot is pretty spectacular and insane, and I think that definitely got them over the top for that series category or whatever it was to win that so that's pretty cool for them definitely more of a pushing for the fx network to get another season out hopefully the main writer and creator still has ideas of where he wants it to go and still wants to do it and if he thinks that's it then i guess that's it but they kind of left it open-ended to where it could continue to be something else so definitely looking forward to that and if you have not checked it out the bear on fx or slash hulu Please check it out. So yes, thanks for watching people. Like and subscribe. Comment down below. Let me know what y'all think. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.